Now, 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, we're continuing to track the case of a Richmond police officer who's fighting for his life after a suspect shot him. School will remain in session today in Lincoln County after the school leaders found a threat written in a bathroom. And people in a Garrett County community are mourning the loss of one of their own after a teenager died in a forklift accident. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Nice to have you with us here on WKYT as we get Thursday off and rolling. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Yesterday, I hate to look backwards, but it was perfection. It really was, and we've had a couple yeah. of really nice days. Looks like we get one more before some changes. Meteorologist Micah Harris is on duty. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, one more before we start to see those showers and thunderstorms move through on Friday. But you know what? Until then, let's focus on what we have. 60s outside. It's 64 degrees. Right now in Richmond, put that in perspective. You got to think typical afternoon highs this time of year is right around 62, 63 degrees. We're already surpassing that this morning. Unbelievable feel. 75, another good one in store. Then the focus of the forecast becomes tomorrow. It's the timing of these showers and storms that might be a problem for some of us. And I'll get right into that timing coming up in a few minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. We're continuing coverage this morning on a story that we've been tracking closely over the last 24 hours. A Richmond police officer still fighting for his life at UK Hospital after being shot on the job. Officer Daniel Ellis was was investigating a robbery in Richmond when one of the suspects shot him. Three people are now charged in connection with the crime. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is joining us live from Richmond now with the latest on all of this. Hillary? Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Officer Daniel Ellis is a seven year veteran of the department here. You can see his cruiser lit up behind me here outside of the Richmond Police Station. As he continues to fight for his life at UK Hospital, three people are now in the Madison County Detention Center charged in connection with his shooting. Police say 33-year-old Officer Ellis and another officer were following a lead on a suspect in an attempted robbery at a gas station that had happened earlier yesterday morning. Police say Greg Ratliff opened the door to an apartment, letting the two officers inside after telling them that he was the only person in the apartment and also that there were not any weapons inside. Investigators say once Officer Ellis walked into a back bedroom, 34-year-old Raleigh Sizemore shot him in the head. Ratliff is now charged with complicity to commit murder of a police officer. In an exclusive interview with Ratliff from the Madison County Detention Center, he told us he lied to the officers because he was afraid of Sizemore. I just didn't want nothing to do with it. So there is a reason why you said that there was no one in the home. Investigators say the second officer then shot Sizemore after Officer Ellis was shot. Sizemore and Ellis were rushed to UK Chandler Hospital. Ellis with life threatening injuries. Now, Sizemore was released yesterday evening and taken to jail, where he is now facing attempted murder of a police officer and unlawful imprisonment charges. Now, there was a third person in the apartment at the time of the shooting. Rita Creech was arrested and is charged with robbery. Now, at this point, police say Officer Ellis is still considered in critical condition there at UK Hospital. Live in Richmond, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Thanks so much, Hillary. Stay with WKYT for continuing coverage of this story. You'll find updates on our website as well on WKYT.com. Well, new this morning, Lexington police arrested two people for importing and selling heroin. 26-year-old Jaquisha Beasley is also charged with drug possession. 27-year-old Dexter Gully with evidence tampering. Police say Beasley drove Gully to pick up a box of heroin shipped from Africa to Lexington. They're both set to be arraigned later today. Also new this morning, Lexington police are investigating after a smash and grab at a cell phone store. Around 1.30, police were called to the Boost Mobile store on East New Circle. Someone threw a concrete block through the front window. Police say the burglar ran inside and stole several hundred dollars worth of merchandise. Friends are remembering a Garrett County teenager who was killed in a forklift accident. 17-year-old Grant Oakley died Tuesday. Investigators say he fell off of a forklift and was run over at Bluegrass Agricultural Distributors. He had just started working there. His friends at Garrett County High School wore camouflage in his honor. He's just an all-around great guy, a guy that would um, always come to you on the road if you needed help, always had everybody laughing. 
The Kentucky Labor Cabinet is now investigating what it calls a potential safety violation. They say it is illegal for someone under the age of 18 to operate a forklift. Well, today, Lincoln County Schools will be staying open despite a threat being found inside a school bathroom. This is the second time this week that the schools have discovered a threat there. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is at our live desk with the latest. Good morning. Yeah, this is becoming an all too familiar topic threatening messages written on school property. Are they the messages of a copycat? Should parents be concerned? Lincoln County Superintendent Karen Hatter takes the newest threat seriously, but is saying there will be school today. The threat was found yesterday in the early evening by Lincoln County Middle School Principal Debbie Sims. The statement found on the wall of the girls' bathroom stating, Kill everybody, 11 5 15. According to the school, the message was investigated by several officials. Hatter said, quote, this certainly appears to be an example of a copycat behavior since a similar incident occurred over the weekend. That incident happened at Crab Orchard Elementary School where a graffiti message was left on a column outside the building. The message said, quote, you getting shot down Monday 10. That message, along with scissors with the word die located on the sidewalk, left school officials to cancel classes on Monday. Now, as for the latest threat, school officials are unsure who is responsible for the message, but they do believe it's a copycat message. Hatter says she understands if parents are uncomfortable sending their kids to school today, but do know there will be local and state law enforcement present throughout the day at Lincoln County Middle School. At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Thank you, Michelle. Police arrested a Knox County teenager after a series of burglaries at schools. Police charged 18-year-old Sean Messer with burglary and criminal mischief. He's alleged to have stolen money and tablet computers from Lynn Camp Elementary and high schools. Police have since recovered some of the items stolen. We are told more arrests are possible in the case. The daughter of an escort who sparked the Louisville basketball sex scandal has been charged with prostitution. WDRB reports Abreche Mormon is facing a misdemeanor charge for a citation issued last year. The citation says an undercover detective contacted her through the website Backpage.com. Her mother, Katina Powell, wrote the book Breaking Cardinal Rules. Powell claims that a former Louisville staffer paid escorts thousands of dollars to have sex with recruits. Both Kentucky Republicans and Democrats are looking ahead after Tuesday's election, after the GOP won most of the statewide offices, including Governor. Governor-elect Matt Bevin said he spent some time with his family yesterday, and along with the governor's seat, Republicans also control the state Senate. And they're now focused on trying to win control of the state House next year. But Democrats are trying to regroup. I hope that uh, Governor-elect Bevin steps back a little bit and rethinks that course. If, uh, if we're going to solve these problems, we're going to have to do it in a bipartisan manner. I've always told Speaker Stumbo, as he sits in the tunnel, he thinks that's a light at the end. It's not. It's really the train coming at him. Governor-elect Bevan and Lieutenant Governor-elect Janine Hampton will be inaugurated on December 8th in Frankfurt. If you're looking to get the flu mist instead of the flu shot to protect you or your children this winter, you may be out of luck. Some pediatricians' offices in the area report a flu mist shortage. Fay County Health Department says that their supplier told them a few weeks ago flu mist order would be decreased and another shipment would not be arriving until late November or early December. Health Department there, uh, leaders say call ahead before coming in for the flu mist. We have plenty of vaccine for the shots. We do not have carry very much uh, flu mist. However, we do participate in the VFC program, which is a vaccine for children program, and there is some mist available in that program. The health department says call ahead before coming in for flu mist. They say a supplier replaced some of the flu strains used in the flu mist, and that's what's caused the delay. All right. Otherwise, you've got to take the little prick with the needle, I guess. Yeah, or you don't shot. get one, you know, yeah, any of those three options. options. Time this morning is 5.09 on WKYT, and we are just getting started on your Thursday, rolling toward the weekend now. A company in Denmark has a new superhero that they hope can save the world, but this one doesn't wear a cape. We'll tell you more after weather. Boy, it feels good once again for today. Now, tomorrow, here comes those showers and thunderstorms. we got a lot to talk about with that one. That comes up next.